Hi, I'm Jill and this is my husband Gerardo. And uh, well, our story started a long time ago, but I would say uh, to really get a good picture of who we are is maybe like who we were before each other. And um, I grew up in a really broken home and a lot of like hurt and trust issues. And um, so when I was just 15, I met my husband Gerardo and um, slowly started piecing back the pieces of my life so that I could start to trust people again. And I really feel like God placed him in my life right at the most important time because I was battling an addiction with the drugs and alcohol and gangs. And I know now you look at me and the testimony that I have now and you would never know that I was that person. But um, here, here we are at 15. I met what became my husband for the last 21 years. And um, we um, came from very different backgrounds. I came from a divorced family uh, with three kids and uh, we weren't raised together. We weren't even raised by our parents most of our life. And my husband came from a family. This, uh, a united, uh, my parents, they never have any violence. They might have some disagreement that is unusual in marriage, um, but I never see them fighting uh, or didn't show me any violence to us to be able to see. Um, and when I, I grew up in Mexico and I came to the United States and uh, knowing what my life I was going to be, um, but one thing I didn't know that God had a plan for me. And I don't know what the plan was, but when I came here, I, grew, I, I was 19, uh, it was 1991, and I started working. That was my plan. Uh, knowing that I was gonna meet my wife and, you know, settle in here and grow up my family. But when I go back to, to now and see how, how God works, it, it puts me into think about it. Because I never knew that I was gonna meet her. I never knew. And when I meet her, then I know it's something God into me that I think, there's the right woman. There's the woman that God has been sending me. And, and there was a woman that, that was looking for something that I have. And I didn't know, but you know, God knows our plan for each one of us. And it's one of the things that I so thankful. Yeah, and so what you didn't say is that he grew up in a family with 12 children, so complete opposite with all of his siblings together, being raised together, and um, just, you know, that loving family that I was looking for. And so he was able to give me that. And when I look back at it, I feel like it was like God showing me different parts of him through my husband, because I learned true forgiveness um, from another human being, not the true forgiveness that Christ gives us, but the forgiveness that another human being can give you from my husband and love from another human being that had nothing to do with maybe if I fixed my hair that day or had makeup on or was wearing sweatpants or nine months pregnant, but just really loving me for who I was. And so I'm so thankful that he had that to give me because I was looking for all the wrong things before that. And um, so as we kind of fast forward our lives, we, um, had our first daughter, uh, Olivia, who is now married, um, and uh, we're so proud of her. And we uh, had had her when I was only 16. I was a young mom. Uh, we got married when I was 16, and we just, you know, continued to grow our family. I was brought up a little bit in a Pentecostal church, so I had some upbringing in that, and I knew that there was this God that was real because I had a father that was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I would walk myself to church as a 12 year old and go and pray three days a week um, at the altar, crying for God to save my dad, 
deliver him from this addiction. And so I knew because it happened. Um, my dad was almost killed in an accident and here all of a sudden he was uh, going to church and serving God. And I'm, I'm 12, so I had no idea what that meant. So I felt like, okay, God did what I needed him to do. And I just went on living. And that's where all of my disaster began um, between then and 15 when I met my husband. So when I did meet my husband, he was raised Catholic. Yes, I was I was raised Catholic. And um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't because the way that we got raised, it was we go to church like once a month or sometimes twice a year. So it was kind of, but I, I I knew that it was a God and I knew that God it was real. I know that uh, for a fact. So, and I know that God also, that he would do miracles. I know that too as well. So <laughs> when she brings it out, the, the, the chica, that she went to church, a Pentecostal church, I went, we were just married, I think, or about to be we married. Were dating. We were dating. And uh, I took him to the church that I had went to when I was younger. And uh, it was a Pentecostal church, uh, speaking in tongues, dancing around in the service, and uh, very lively worship. And uh, mm -hmm. we were a few pews back, and he nudges me, and he says, Who is that? And I said, That's my aunt. <laughs> and uh, she was just screaming and shouting and running around. And he's like, These people are crazy. And uh, he did not want anything to do with it. So after that moment, um, we, you know, we stayed for the whole service and visited my grandma. And after that service, we decided, okay, to make both of us happy, he was raised Catholic. I was, uh, for the most part, I only knew Pentecostal teaching. So we decided, since they were both so extremely different, we were going to go non-denominational. Yes. So we attended a large church in Rockford and we took our kids. Now we have, uh, fast forward, we have five kids at this point. So um, we started attending a church and our kids hated it. I mean, yeah. they cried from the minute we brought them into these humongous rooms with all these fun toys and videos and all these young teachers. They just, they were not happy. We had these little pagers and I mean, I felt like it never stopped beeping. Uh, we would go and get them and we would try to sit through the service or then we would try to put the other kids in with the other ones and uh, nothing worked. So we decided that wasn't the church for us. The kids weren't happy. We weren't happy. Mm -hmm. um, nobody even knew that we were there. Uh, it was so big that I don't think we saw the same person twice. No. I even had a coworker no, that invited us and I never saw her. No. <laughs> so, um, so we really um, didn't like the feel of it. And so we tried another small church in Belvedere. Yep. And uh, it was great. I mean, I think they, they had a good te uh, teaching and um, the kids could not get settled in that church either. No, they, they weren't I had I had to sit in Sunday school with them the whole time. They would cry, I'd have to hold them. And so we just decided, you know what? This isn't for us. We're just not finding the right place. So mm -hmm. we just stopped looking. and. Um, then, uh, my daughter was in first grade and she met this friend that was new to her school. And I know this sounds crazy because you think this is your first grader. She's seven. And, um, she said, mom, I have this new friend. Her name is Caitlin and she's so nice. And so we get to conference day. It's like open house slash conference day. And they just happened to be the time slot or something right after us because they were in the classroom at the same time. And we met her mom, Tasha. And from that moment on, we became friends. And I remember it came about over Girl Scout cookies yeah. of all things. <laughs> we went and I talked to them and as I'm walking out of her house, she said, oh, do you guys go to church? And I said, oh no. And she's like, you should come to church mm -hmm. with us. And I'm like, oh, what kind of church is it? And she's like, uh, well, it's a Pentecostal church. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, it must be a good church if it's a Pentecostal church and people are inviting them to it, right? <laughs> so, um, because of the experience that uh, we had had earlier, I wasn't sure. But I had a mission because my dad that I had been praying for years earlier was again back into drugs and alcohol and just moved back. And I thought, you know what? This is the perfect way to get him into church. 
And so I called up the church and um, Sister Maria Gardner answered the phone and I said, hi, um, I'm calling to see, does this lady named Tasha go to church there? And she seemed really kind of taken back by it. And she's like, um, I'm sorry, who is this? And uh, I was telling her the story and she invited us to come out, gave us the directions and everything. And we came on Mother's Day and on t uh, May 2007. So it'll be 12 years this May. And we brought my dad and um, we ultimately fell in love with the church from the minute we walked in the back door. Yep. Um, our kids came in the back door and we had um, three three-year-olds. We had a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. And so if that doesn't tell you how crazy our life was, uh, we reason. walked in the back door and they saw a friend right away yeah. and they were so excited because he had just moved a few months before that and they went to preschool with him and so he just happened to be at the time the pastor's grandson and so now our older daughter has a friend that goes to church here our three three-year-olds have a friend that go to church here and so they were so excited and our middle daughter isabella she was so nervous because she was going to be in a class of her own and that's what I loved about the church right away. They were like, you know what? We can let her go into the class with her sister. She was so happy. I think that lasted only a few weeks before she was friends with other kids and um, enjoying church all on her own. But we just had so much fun from the minute we were here. We just felt like part it, of a family. It was it was um, really, we feel really like it was a, a welcoming church, like yes. a family yes. church. Mm -hmm. um, we got filled right away that there was going to be our church. And uh, um, it's not just from the kids, but even uh, my wife and I, after service, we, we saw, I think, mm -hmm. I think it's a good church. I yeah. think uh, uh, we're going to stay in there. And because, I mean, we filled it right away compared to the other churches. They, we didn't feel it at all. And and I I I think I think so much for uh, uh, to the Lord that how he he direct that friend to my daughter yes uh, to to get us into a church because at that time we weren't going to church no, we, we were, were just we were actually so far like, from totally, going to church yeah. uh, so, we needed it in that moment at that time yeah because yeah. we were going through. Uh, um, well, I think, we, I mean, it was hard. We were raising five kids five, and yeah, was... Um, I was a stay at home mom and my husband worked, well, Gerardo worked. And mm -hmm. so it was uh, stressful. And as a mom of five, sometimes you feel neglected as a person because you're taking care of all these little beings and your husband comes home, he's taking care of all these little beings. And um, so it did kind of lead to some, some marital issues that we were kind of going through. And um, we just, I think we were just at a place that we were living, but we weren't happy, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I, I, I don't think that we did, didn't find happiness in ourselves or each other. I just think in all, we were so overwhelmed with life that we just weren't happy. Um, we didn't have that joy. And so that was something that from the first service that we were in here, um, Bishop was our pastor then, and we were sitting in the back row, I want to say maybe two pews from the back, and um, he had an altar call, and the whole message, I'm mm -hmm. like, this is me, he's talking to me, and uh, he barely got the words altar call out of his mouth, and I was like walking up to the front, tears pouring down my face, and, I'm, and for a moment I thought to myself, my husband's probably thinking I'm crazy, you know, because he's never seen me like this, but I knew that I needed it right then and right there. And um, I, but I worked then, I did, I just started working. Uh, I just got a job <laughs> and for some sanity to get out of the house. And so, um, so I told them I wanted to come, but they only had service on days that I worked. I just happened to be off because it was Mother's Day. Yeah. And so he started coming every Thursday night and every Sunday with all of our kids mm -hmm. by himself. And if I was off, I came with, and they were praying that I would, uh, you know, get my hours changed, which they did change them, but then I just quit my job because I just realized that this was where I needed to be with my family. And uh, we literally jumped on board from the get-go. I was um, 
involved in like ladies auxiliary with the different departments and everything and mm -hmm. uh, we were just so excited that there was so much happening and um and then came baby number six so we we started with bible study actually i, I want to backtrack a minute because oh yeah that was something Amen. that really drew us uh pastor uh David Garter, our bishop now, he uh, had home Bible study, him and his wife with me and Gerardo, and our kids went, and our pastor now actually babysat our kids, it entertained them. It was a baby city. And um, <laughs> we had so much fun with them, but in every Bible study, um, at the end, Sister Gardner would say, um, since you believe, uh, have you been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost? At the end of every Bible study, I, it, even though she knew the answer, um, and I remember one time saying, well, no, because when I go home, I'm cussing like a trucker. I can't, I can't, I can't do this and say this and, and then go home and do that. So I really wanted another baby. And um, we kind of decided that we were probably done, you know, with five. And um, I was just like, God, I really want to have another baby. And I just felt like, that answer to prayer in that moment. And um, I found out I was pregnant in August. And so this is really rapid, May to August, you know, everything happened so quick because we just jumped on, we just fell in love with the church. And um, I uh, was here on a Thursday night, nothing planned, just listen to the message. And I'm like, it's today. I'm gonna get baptized today. And I told them as soon as it was over, nobody planned anything. I said, I wanna get baptized right now. Mm -hmm. And the water was freezing cold. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, was... Uh, it's nice when you plan it, cause it's nice and warm, yeah. but it was freezing cold on an August evening. And I uh, just, from that moment, just jumped right in. And I uh, just loved every bit of it. The ladies conference was right after that. and. Um, I just stayed so busy being a part of this family of believers. It was like a new family to me, this family that I had been missing my whole life. And it, they really made me feel like family. Um, Pastor Jordan and I joke that we're like brother and sister at times because of that. And uh, Sister Gardner and uh, Bishop, they're like grandparents to our kids and have been since we started attending. And it's just a family like no other. And I can just say that now, here we have all these kids that are involved in ministry. Um, our oldest daughter that I said got married, she's a youth leader. Um, she plays the keyboard, she sings. Our other daughter, uh, Isabella, she plays the drums. Um, yes. Juliana sings. Uh, Kyle does AV, Curtis does AV, he fills in as an usher here and there. And our littlest one is yet to be discovered, but she wants to be a teacher. So um, she's, and she loves to sing, but she's too shy. Um, <laughs> but we're just so, so blessed to be a part of everything that Solid Rock has done over the last almost 12 years. Almost 12 years. Yeah. Uh, we watched, About to come 12 years. Yeah, we watched so many things <laughs> happen and change as our pastor became our pastor from our assistant pastor to, well, yeah. youth leader to assistant pastor to our pastor and watch his family grow. Watch and grow and then uh, it just, it just been a blessing. It's been a blessing all the way around that how, how from looking back uh, 10, uh, 12 years ago, how we started to where we are right now. Right. Even our children's uh, even Pastor Jordan, I mean, when we first meet them, he was, uh, how old he was? 16. Like 16, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, living in Cape, Cape, uh, Cape and Cornfields out there. <laughs> okay, in the cornfields. Out <laughs> they the were way out in the country of uh, Hunting Road. Um, it's, it's so amazing how, how things, they get changed. How can your life be different mm -hmm. uh, for just accepting, just for accepting the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's, I, I don't know, but I think, I think that that's so awesome how far we made it. Yeah. How far. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to God that they give the knowledge 
to Bishop and to Pastor Jordan to continue teaching the the Word of God because it's a it's a big job. Yeah. It's a big job uh, that not many people are able to, to follow through. And I'm so thankful because God has been doing amazing things in my family and here we are and we working in the ministry and it's, it's so awesome, so awesome how much has been, yeah, actually, has been happened you, to our lives. He was just ordained uh, last, last year in last June. Last year in June, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, working his way through the minister's license and yes. um, t working through it together too because when uh, we started the classes, we went together. And we I think that's together, important yeah. is that um, if one spouse is in the ministry, you're in it together. It's not, you know, um, you don't want to be working against what God's trying to do. Yes. And so um, so I'm so like glad that we have a marriage now that we just work together so well and um, just help uplift each other through things. Mm -hmm. And something that uh, Gerard was just saying, when I walked in the back door here one day, many years ago, uh, probably 2010, 2009 or 10, um, Bishop Gardner was in the cafe and we came through the back door for Sunday service and he said, you broke it. And I said, I broke it? And he said, you broke the generational curse. And I'm like, what? And he's like, hmm. you broke the generational curse of your family, of people being in church and falling out of church, but you, you've you stuck with it. And, you know, and that was already 10 years ago almost that he said that, and here we are. And I'm so glad that our kids, we've never walked away from God. No. And so that they know that you can still go through things and still have a relationship with God and mm -hmm. still press through and still strive to be better. And here, you know, here they're adults now. We have two adults. Yeah. We have twin boys that are gonna be an adult in a year. And Man. I know <laughs> we, they're, they're growing so fast. And so, but we brought them up in a home that loves God um, shows them the importance of family, but yes. putting God first in your family, how it can change the atmosphere of your home. That definitely, yeah. definitely. And then one other thing is that teach them the how much God loves us mm -hmm. and God show us to be able to love them as well. Yeah. That's the most wonderful thing that I, I can ever thank the Lord for so many things uh, that has been done in our family, in our marriage, and, um, every single day, yes. every single day. That's, that's a, a blessing because we go through challenge every single day. And the people they do not know God, sometimes I do feel sorry because we feel like it's anything we can do. And I think we can, you know, but we have to like accept them first, accept him first. And I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful. So here we are, 2019 and yeah. going strong and just continuing the ministry that God has for this church and for um, the ministry that God is gonna give to my husband one day as well. So, um, and we can only do that because of the teaching and the backing yes. of our pastor and our bishop. Mm -hmm. And so we're so thankful to be a part of Solid Rock Community Church and yes. uh, help them grow and help the departments here grow and help change this community and let them see mm -hmm. that there is a true, one true loving God that is here waiting for them, mm -hmm. just like he was waiting for us in 2007. Same it's yeah. the same way how he's he's waiting for anyone that they like to know who Jesus is. Yep. He's waiting for you. Yep. yep. So from drug addict to alcoholic, living on the streets, to a mom of six, mm -hmm. with a husband that's a minister, and working your way through all these different uh, teams and departments, Sunday school teacher, and different things like, I'm just so thankful to have that testimony that no matter where you came from, that today 
the same life that we have could be somebody else's too. So when we look at somebody hurting or broken, you look at how complete they can be if they just put Jesus in the mix. If you put Jesus in your life, yeah. definitely, mm -hmm. definitely they can turn your life around. A hundred percent. It's a guarantee that will happen. Yes. Yep. And that's so, our story. It's our story. Mm -hmm.